Hi everybody, it's Jay and uh, Simon here. And uh, we are gonna show you how to make a sketchbook. And we have Inara, Freya, and Ali on the Zoom. And we have two of them who've done it before. And for you at home, you can follow along. So what you'll need is th three sheets of paper, scissors, a string, or a uh, pipe cleaner. A pipe cleaner. And uh, this is what the end result will be, is a, a sketchbook which you can doodle. And you can doodle at home while you're watching our lovely faces and create on uh, the internet. So um, you want to take your three pieces of paper and line them up and then fold it in half. See that? Okay, and once you fold in half, line up the seam evenly so it looks like this when you open it. You have that? Okay, and what we're gonna do now is uh, take a pen and we're gonna mark four lines which we're gonna use to uh, make some holes in the back of our sketchbook. So I'll show you uh, how I'm marking them. You can use a marker, crayon. So that's what it looks like. And if you're on the camera, and Simon, if you can see it. Okay. I'm not ready. I can see it. Okay, so once you're done that step, you're going to take your scissors. Can I do it again? And do four lines. Because those four lines are going to make holes that we can put the string or the uh, pipe cleaner through. So on those four lines, I'm going to cut a small triangle. So that the holes almost look like well, they'll look like that. There you go. See that? Is that I cut them out in triangles? Yes, I cut them in triangles so that I can put the uh, string through. So just be careful not to cut yourself. And so that's what it'll look like when it's on its side. And then when you open up, you can see holes. See that? How big should you make them? Should you make the holes equal? Uh, just big enough that you can put your string through. But make sure that there's a gap here. You don't want them too close. And so what I'm going to do is, I've, if you have a string or a uh, pipe cleaner, this is pretty long. I'll need half, please. We're going to cut it in half. So I'm going to throw Simon a coffee. Thank you. And even this one you can cut in half. And what I'm going to do is take this. So this is the inside fold, and that's the outside. So I'm going to go, I'm going to go from the inside to the outside. And I'm going to stick the string or pipe cleaner 
through the hole so it sticks out like that. And then you can bend it over, or if it's long enough, you can twist it. So it's like a staple. So I just twisted it on the back side a bit. And so that's what it looks like on the inside. And that's what it looks like on the outside. And there you go. So this is your inside, and that's your outside. And when, you've, uh, when you're happy with it, just fold it again, fold that seam, and you can decide which is going to be the front and which is the back, and then you can put your name on it. So uh, I'm going to make one for Fuzz, the bee puppet. Come on up, Fuzz. Hey, is there supposed to be a gap right here? Yes, there should be a, be a gap. So Fuzz is going to have his own sketchbook. Have a seat, Fuzz. And uh, I'm going to put Fuzz's name on there because Fuzz is not all right. So. Fuzz the bumblebee. So write your name or your animal character on the front. What do you have there? Winnedzie's sketchbook. For those of you at home, I think that's your camera. That's my camera. There you go. So when you're done, can you show us what you've made? And feel free to doodle while, while we're doing more of the programming here. Do you have any questions at home? Yeah. How do you keep the string to stay in? You have to tie it on the other side. Okay. So loop it through the inside and then tie it on the outside here. Oh. We tied on both sides. Okay, well that's the uh, sketchbook activity. Hey everybody at home, this is uh, Jay Peachy with Fuzz the Wild Bumblebee, and we have Winnedzy from Winnedzy's Workshop. It's an indigenous artist who's uh, here joining us on a special episode of um, the Mission Folk Music Festival Virtual Pancakes and Puppetry Jam. We just made that up. Welcome, Simon Winnedzy James. Thank Please you for introduce having yourself. Me. Yeah. Well, thank you for allowing me to participate. So uh, we also have Fuzz the Wild Bumblebee. And uh, you'll notice that we're sharing voices because uh, I. Uh, couldn't afford another puppeteer, basically. Yeah, that's <laughs> we're very truthful and honest here on puppet television, and uh, it's, it's uh, yeah, it's just really hard to explain at the very last minute. So this is Fuzz, everybody. Yo, I'm Fuzz. I'm a wild male bumblebee. I'm native to this land, and uh, yeah, um, as a male bumblebee, I do not know how to pollinate or work, and my my only job is really to uh, search for queens. So. If you see one around, please let me know. Otherwise, uh, I have about a 30-minute flying time, and my sisters feed me at the uh, at the nest. We don't live in hives like the uh, the uh, the honeybees, so it's uh, don't get us mistaken. We're usually hairier, as you can tell by my uh, large, oversized furriness, and uh, 
Yeah, in puppetry, we exaggerate a little bit, so that we're not actually this large. So if you see uh, an insect this big, don't call 911. It, I'm not going to sting you either. So anyways, my name is Fuzz. Um, thank you for inviting my, uh, me here with uh, Winded Z. Nice to meet you for the first time. Yes, nice to meet you too. And uh, Jay. Uh, we know each other from a past life. So um, we're going to talk a little bit more with the Winnedz and uh, what do you have going on there, uh, sir, young man. Oh, in order for me to be an artist, you have to do art. Just like a writer needs to write, and somebody who cooks needs to cook. So I need to create as an artist. So what I've been working on uh, since uh, last week is a, uh, a wild salmon. Uh, carved from a uh, second growth cedar. It still smells the same, it's just not as fun to carve as old growth. But we're trying to work on sustainable products these days, uh, trying to be a little bit more environmental uh, aware. And, and so I'm carving a second growth cedar. And uh, so these are some of the tools that I use in Weenadzi's workshop. Uh, so we have straight knives, we have curved knives, we have chisels. And at home, I have some much bigger tools that I just couldn't fit into the studio today. And uh, I also brought along some noisemakers because my children couldn't come, and they're my usual noisemakers. And then, of course, I have my portfolios, which pretty much follow me everywhere I go. Um, you know, I find it a little strange. We're actually just leaving a year and a half of, of isolation and, and, and confinement and, and restrictions and everything else. And I was thinking about how if I was able to go back in time and tell my elders that we had to wear a mask every day, they probably would have been very excited. This is not the mask that they're thinking about. The masks that they're thinking about is more along the lines of something like, like this. Oh, wow. All right, so masks like this, I'm pretty sure they would have been very excited to wear. Oh. And if they were able to wear these every day, uh, they would have been very excited about doing what we're doing right now. That's incredible. But it'd, very, it'd be very hard to be an anti-masker when you have that creative license. Exactly. Yeah. And so, you know, maybe I should be carving a, 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 a COVID mask right now. Please, can, can yeah. you do it? And I'll, I'll go shopping with it with my, my buddy. Well, what I think is I should have actually uh, carve a, a red cedar mask that actually has two hands over their mouth so that they can't talk. Yeah, that, that'd be a <laughs> way to silence some, some of the people. But, you know, I think right now a lot of children... Um, I think that's cause, called a muzzle. It's called a mu that, that's muzzle, a different, not a mask. No, no. But I think a lot of the children have the right idea. Uh, staying home and doing some creative crafts uh, virtually, I think, is a wonderful idea. And, and so I re I'm really enjoying being here today. Awesome. Well, I appreciate you uh, sharing that. And um, it, it would have been awesome to have your kids as noisemakers yes. and as humans, because then they can perform two roles. Um, and you're, uh, your, kids are, your kids are awesome. So we, uh, we uh, thank you for bringing that representative noisemaker of, of your children. And we have some awesome kids that are joining us on the Zoom. Inara, Freya, and Ali, hello. So for those of you at home, you will see um, them in their art. Uh, they're doing some art projects right now. And uh, the other thing we would like to acknowledge, we're on the indigenous territory of the Coast Salish people here on Musqueam, Squamish, and tsleil And Simon, you're from an indigenous uh, territory. Can you explain where that is? And it's, it's very hard to pronounce for... For me. Uh, yeah, I come from the Kwakwakiwak Nation. Uh, we have one of the largest territories in uh, on the coast here. Uh, we have the uh, uh, five major inlets within our territories, uh, including our, our northern relatives up in, in, in the, uh, the Bella Coola area. Um, we, we, at one time, we were battling with them, but then eventually we became family. And uh, so for that reason, we, we share so much of our culture uh, together with them and and it's uh it's wonderful to have some of these locations because uh, it's where these wonderful stories have that have uh, evolved over the years have come from 
uh, 10,000 years of, of stories uh, that I was able to use to, to help create Raven Tales, uh, including a story of the bumblebee, uh, where one of my ancestors actually uh, had a vision while he was sleeping or a dream uh, that there was a great flood coming. And the vision was for him to go into the forest and look for this specific tree and when you find the tree, you'll know what to do. So this man went into the forest and found this specific tree and started to dig at the roots and went un inside this tree and found out that it was completely hollow from the, the base all the way up to the top. And uh, he entered into this very large space that was in the middle of a giant cedar tree. And if you could imagine because there's so few of them that exist today how large the inside of an ancient growth cedar that was thousands of years old might have been it would have been the size of a small apartment and so he moved his entire family into this inside of this tree and before the floods came the bees actually covered the the hole and sealed it up so for that reason my people have been honoring the bees ever since with a dance Oh, wow. And in our dance group, my family dance group, all of the children, including myself, when I was uh, three and four years old, uh, that was my initiation into our dance group, was actually dancing around like a bee. Nice. Yeah. Well, Fuzz would like to say something. Yes, as a male, um, apparently the male uh, bees, uh, at least the honeybees, they, they don't know how to dance because it's the females that do the dance to... Uh, Basically, it's kind of like a Google map. They, they would dance around to map where uh, the best nectar in the neighborhood is. So, uh, yeah, I, I'm, not, I'm not quite sure I have the dance moves, but uh, maybe one day I could learn from you. Oh, well, Buzz, I think we can learn right now and, and show the audience. All you have to do, buddy, is just wiggle. Okay. Just give it a little wiggle. Okay, uh, I'm not quite sure. Yeah, you can. Fuzz is really shy, so... Uh, no, I don't know if I can do it. Come on, Buzz, wiggle. Okay. Is that and, good? Is that good? Is that good? Well, you can imagine being three and four years old as a child wearing a full bee costume, and your job was to wiggle on the floor. Well, I have the costume, but the wiggling I have to work on. Yes. Is it maybe I'll uh, take yoga or something first and then loosen my joints and then... It should come naturally to you. Okay, I'll try again. Yes. Okay, Fuzz, you can do it. Yeah, okay. Not bad. Not bad. All right, keep working on it. Thank you, uh, Simon, and for teaching Fuzz his potentially natural moves. How to dance like a bee. Yes, yes. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Don't sting anybody. Well, the males don't have stingers. So oh, that's it's, true. It's, it's, yes. it's more reputation. Yes. Yes. So, all right, well, the ladies of home have been creating. Um, so, uh, can you show us what you have been creating? Fuzz the Bumblebee was just doing some dance moves, so didn't have time to do the sketchbook activity, but uh, there you go. Do you have anything you can show us on the screen? Oh, nice. Anything inside yet? Nothing? Cool. You got a cat? Dog. Wolf. A wolf. Oh. Amazing. Better one inside, but I'm not done it yet. All right. We'll keep working on it. Okay, this is Fuzz back here again. And so Simon and his friends created a story called The Raven Tales. And uh, this episode, Raven Gets Sick. Can you uh, explain to the viewing audience at home what uh, that episode is about? Well, in the beginning, when the humans were created by the Great Spirit, uh, they w were omnipotent. They, they, they didn't get sick, they didn't age, uh, and you can see in the characters that they actually had facial designs and designs on their, on their bodies. And as we progress later, uh, was actually the intent, if we got beyond 26 episodes, was to have those body, body markings disappear. Um, but in this episode, the humans still have their markings, uh, which were gifts from, from the Great Spirit. And the animals didn't like the idea that the humans did not get sick and that they did not die. And so 
uh, they talked to the Great Spirit about this and, and basically convinced the Great Spirit that it was time for change. And so humans were able to get sick for the first time. And they, they argued a good point, a very good point, is, is that uh, in order for us to evolve and become better humans, sometimes we need to feel not so well. Uh, so that episode was created out of the, uh, the idea that as human beings, we need to improve. Awesome. All right. You're going to see Raven gets sick. of the long winter, when the touch of the sun barely sweeps the land. The first people know to stay inside and keep warm so the village is as quiet as the snowfall, except for... <coughs> something new has come to people, something nobody has experienced before. can't possibly get worse. Why are you complaining? I am so snuffed up. I sound like an idiot when I talk. <laughs> Nothing new there. <laughs> Being miserable hasn't made you any funnier. Was that you say fuffier? <laughs> 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 yes, funnier. What's happening to us? We've been this way for days. No doubt, something Raven did. Don't look at me. If I'd done something this bad, I wouldn't be suffering as well. Trust me. <coughs> Some comfort that is. What'd I do? Really? I'm innocent, I tell you. <coughs> 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 Raven is right. He had nothing to do with this. You see? Ha! Huh? Thank you, Frog. So who is responsible? We're all miserable. And look at my nose! <laughs> None of us have been out in days. Even the children feel terrible. And nothing we do seems to help. Hot water, blankets, none of it does any good. We still feel terrible. Hmm, perhaps a story will clear this up. Oh great, another story. A story? Ah, oh, goody story! <laughs> Come on, skip this story. Just, just give us the juicy details. Yes, we can't suffer any longer, Frog. Especially me. 
Let her speak. It would do us good to hear something other than sneezing and coughing. Go on, Frog. Thank you. Well, it was a few days ago when the snow began anew. I was summoned to see the Great Spirit. Apparently, there was some problem in the forest that needed solving. The animals had called a council to speak with the Great Spirit. They had come a great distance to see him, and they had some, shall we say, complaints that needed airing. And the Great Spirit called me to his side. Frog, so good to see you. You know the animals. Every kind of animal was there. Birds and beasts, fur, feather and scale, insect and fish, and finally frogs. Those who live between earth and water and serve as counsel to the Great Spirit. With you here now, Frog, we can begin. Honorable animals, you have asked me here to consider some complaints you have about the way I have created this world. You know me to be your friend in every way, so please, do not hesitate to speak. Now who is first among you? I cannot hear you if you don't speak aloud. Great Spirit! <gasps> Great Spirit! The humans live a life free of burden, with feet that are swift and hands that are quick and capable. They walk upright and rule both day and night. They have the warmth of fire and shelter of homes. They can gather plenty enough to take them through the winter. The only suffering they ever know is that of which they bring upon themselves. Great Spirit, we've asked you to consider this and perhaps find some way of making things, well, equal. Spirit, the humans live a life free of burden, with feet that are swift and hands that are quick and capable. We've asked you to consider this and perhaps find some way of making things, well, equal. I hear your words, Mouse, and you have spoken bravely and honestly, and there is some truth in what you say. So I ask, what would you have me do to remedy this circumstance?
Hey there, great spirit. I'm Yona, the bear chief. I know you, Yona. Welcome. Well, it's like this, great spirit. We bears figure, since we've got to live our lives without the benefits of fire, coughing and sniffing and living in cold caves for half our lives during the winter, well, it should only be fair that the same be true of people in the world. The coughing and sniffing bit, that is. S so yeah, that was what we were thinking. Thank you, Yona. listened, but he said nothing. At this, the mother snake came forward. It is good to see you, Unatsia. Ah, wish... Is this... <clears throat> Since we must all live our lives with our bellies on the ground, with no way to avoid the burning stones in summer, the people should also suffer a terrible heat in their bodies. I thank you, great spirit. Again, the great spirit listened, but he said nothing. Hello, Siskaya. We are honored, great spirit. All of us speak as one on this. We believe it is only fair that the people of the world have pain in their joints, like we the insects do, as they grow older. A simple request, that is all. Sisiqua, I thought you would have some word in this. Of course, great spirit. We birds are nothing else, if not tigers. And your objection? <clears throat> great spirit, we are tired of hearing the humans talk all the time. Blah, 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 etc. The words are not beautiful, like the song of the bird. <laughs> beautiful. <clears throat> The words of the people are ugly and clumsy. Ah, the bird chief, ask that for part of the year they may be struck mute. Oh, at the very least, be given sore throats so they will not speak. <laughs> 
fish wish to speak. The fish have asked me to consider the cold of the water in which they live. They ask that the people suffer a cold in their bodies, equal to the cold of the waters in which they dwell. There was a great silence in the forest. Frog, I have heard from all the animals of the forest and their complaints appear fair. Yet I am not at ease. I need your counsel. Is there anyone else who should speak before I render my decision? I can think of one assembly gathered here who has not spoken. Of course, how could I forget? It is decided then. I will give all of the animals here what you wish to make things even among you and the people. <laughs> so once a year, the people of this world will suffer like the bear, and the snake, and the insect, and the fish, and will be silenced as the birds wish. You have asked, I have honored your request. But, as I have been counseled by Frog, and as the plants and trees have agreed, there will be a cure in all these ills to be found in the roots, the leaves, and the bark. A cure for any ill, 
if the people are smart enough to find them and wise enough to preserve and remember them. Well, they aren't smart enough to figure that one out. <laughs> and certainly not wise enough to remember. That is all. We are done here. So now you know how this sickness has come into the world, and... You mean to tell me the animals did this to me? They did this to all of us, Raven. Especially me. And look at my nose. Mm, actually, not all of you. You and Raven are not sick at all, Eagle. You're just being silly. What? As elders, you are not affected. You just think you are. But their sickness is real. <coughs> but why? You have heard why. The Great Spirit is wise enough to know that balance must be maintained in all things. He did what had to be done. Balance, schmalance. I say we get the Great Spirit sick and see how he feels. The Great Spirit feels all things at all times. He is among you now, and he feels your sickness. Of this you need not worry. Well, we're still miserable. Your story didn't fix that. But remember everything I said. Yeah. Frog also said something about the plants. Yes, yeah, she did. We just have to find the right plants to cure our ill health. We have plenty of dried plants here. We just have to figure out which ones will cure us. Yeah, and remember the cure. Well, let's get to work. There's plenty to do. Hey, where's Raven? feel better already. We're back, everybody. So we just aired Raven Gets Sick. And uh, yeah, the animals created a little bit more balance in the, in the world. And uh, so we had uh, the, uh, the ladies watch Raven Gets Sick episode. And uh, we had their feedback. And um, we wanted to ask, because in the Raven Tales episode, it talked about plant medicines. And uh, we wanted to ask, ha do you have a plant medicine 
or a nature, natural medicine that you take to make you feel better? Can you hear me? A plant medicine that makes me feel better? Yes, the, qu the question is, is are there any natural medicine? Because you know how in the Raven Gets Sick episode, the creator said there are medicines in the plants and trees that will help the humans. And if we're smart enough, we might be able to heal ourselves. So can anyone raise their hand and uh, mention their favorite plant medicine? Oh, Allie. Yes, go ahead. I have an aloe vera plant. Oh, what do you use your aloe vera plant for? For like if I get stung by a bee or something like that. Like burns or something. Oh, very good. Do you grow your own aloe vera plant at home or do you, do you buy it? Do you buy the medicine? We grow them. Oh, wow. So if I get a bug bite, not from me, I can borrow some? Oh, are you going to show us? Oh, right on. Oh, good for you. Wow. That's what... The, so we have a live aloe vera plant on Zoom. That's amazing. There are a whole bunch of um, plantain plants in our yard. Oh, plantain, yes. The frog leaf. Good for you. So... Uh, so you can, what do you use your frog leaf for? <laughs> Plantain. You use it for cuts? Uh, yeah, I put it on all those cuts and stuff like that, and it helps heal after I chew it. Does it sting? Yeah, it stings. Hmm. Oh. Hand sanitizer on a cut. Oh, hand sanitizer and plantain? Wow. That's the animals making it even. I never want to put hand sanitizer on it. Never put hand sanitizer on your cuts. Never, ever, ever. Yeah. It stings a whole oh, bunch. I can, okay, just don't even talk about it. I can feel it. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you for sharing your uh, plant medicine techniques. That is, uh, you, even before the Raven Tales episode, you were using natural remedies, which is good. And uh, fuzz didn't sting you, just so you know. It was probably his sister. Yes, might have been bother them when they're at work. You know, if you want to, if you get too close, you're gonna stay away from me. Awesome. Well, that is uh, the Raven get sick episode. Uh, any last thoughts, uh, Simon, on uh, that? Well, that episode again was was focusing on how we as humans can heal ourselves uh, through the use of natural products uh, that were available to us in the forest. Uh, my people have been doing it for thousands of years, and uh, we're still doing it today. We have a lot of healers in our villages, and they're still practicing these today. And uh, maybe if we can get these uh, pharmaceutical companies to follow the teachings of our people, then maybe things will start to get better in this world. Awesome. All right. Well, that is uh, the first episode with uh, Simon Winnedzi James, the ladies on Zoom here, and... Uh, Fuzz, the male bumblebee, I didn't sting you. Yes, that's yes, just so you know. All right, we'll be back with another episode, and um, we will uh, show uh, the story of uh, when Kulos returns, or the return of Kulos. Yes, the return of Kulos will be in the next episode. All right, we'll be right back tomorrow. Have a good <laughs> night. Remember us in your dreams. Thank you.